All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. Going through a series of video presentations for the Rankin Technical College AWD Application and Web Development 1000, I'm sorry, 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class. The main textbook scheduled to be used for the class is ASP.NET MVC with Entity Framework and CSS by Mr. Lee Naylor. A great book as far as code, not so great as far as the comments that go with the book. So I am first going over the John Galloway Professional MV, ASP.NET MVC 5 book. I've gone over the first four chapters and I'm about smack dab in the middle of chapter 5 on page 124. So right now we're going we're up to the section whoops, on helpers, models, and view data. As it says there, helpers give you the fine-grained control you need over your HTML while taking away the grunge work of building a UI to show the proper controls, labels, error messages, and values. So it says, let's take a break from the edit form you're building and look at a simple example. If you want to set the price of an album in a form, you could use code like this. In the view, you can render a text box to display the price by giving text box helper the same thing like this. All right. So the text box helper will produce the following HTML. So rather than you doing this, you can do this and have that render. When the helpers look inside view data, they can also view properties of objects. It says change the previous controller action to look like the following. You can display, you can use the following code to display a text box with the album's price. So you notice in here basically that is a razor statement. And that's album dot, so meaning again the property, the price property. Now they mentioned there it says if no values match, the helper attempts to look up a value for the portion of the name before the first dot. And in this case it finds a type album. It then evaluates the remaining position and finds a value to use, if at all possible. They mentioned there notice that the ID attribute uses an underscore rather than a dot. Dots are not legal inside of an ID attribute. So the runtime replaces the dots with the underscore. The text box helper, as mentioned near the middle of page 125, also works well against the strongly typed against strongly typed view data. And there's an example. Now form help, helpers, rather, as mentioned on the bottom of the page, also enable you to supply an explicit value to avoid automatic data lookup if you want to do that. Advantage of doing that, I would think at least, is going to be speed. Disadvantage, well, I suppose if you write the wrong query in there, you could be kind of, or the wrong lambda expression in this case, you probably wouldn't be getting what you'd want. Let's jump down into strongly typed helpers. So I'm on the middle of page 100 and 26. And the author says here, if you are uncomfortable using string literals to pull values from view data, ASP.NET MVC also provides an assortment of strongly typed helpers. With these helpers, you pass a lambda expression to specify a model property for rendering. The model type for the expression will be the same as the model specified for the view. To strongly type a view against the model album, you'll need to add the following at the top of the view. That's a directive which basically says you want to make available what's in the MVC Music Store models and in particular the album model. So after the directive is in place you can rewrite the code in a little bit easier to read manner.
helpers and model metadata, middle of page 127. Helpers do more than just look up data inside of view data. They can also be used to take advantage of available model metadata. The example that's shown here says the album edit form uses the label helper to display a label element for the genre select list. So this produces this. And it says, where did the genre text here come from? The helper asks the runtime whether any model metadata is available for genre ID. The runtime provides that information in the display name, which is there, and that's what's used. The data annotations are going to be discussed in the next chapter. As it says, they can have a dramatic influence on many of the helpers because they'll provide metadata that the helpers are going to need. All right. Templated helpers starting on the bottom of page 127 and going on to page 128. The templated helpers in ASP.NET MVC, MVC rather, build HTML using metadata and a template. Metadata includes information about the model value as well as model metadata. Again, much of that metadata can be supplied through data annotations. Now, they mention it's there, they give an example using the text box for method, all right, which will render something that looks like this. And they say that instead of using that, you can use the editor for, all right. Notice what it says. It renders the same HTML as the text box for, but you can change the HTML using data annotations. And they give you examples here. And they mention afterwards, because you asked for an editor in the generic sense, the editor for looked at the metadata and determined the best HTML element to use. What's nice about doing it this way, as you'll notice in the next chapter, is you can make it very hard, in, at least in an ideal world, you're making it very hard for the end user to screw up. But not if, but when they do screw up anyway, you're also providing a way to let them know what they did wrong in a fairly nice way. So hopefully at least, they don't do it again. All right? Okay. Helpers and model state. All the helpers you use to display form values also interact with model state. Remember, model state is the byproduct of model binding. It holds all the validation errors that have been detected during the model binding. It also holds, holds the raw values the user submits to update a model. As it says here, helpers used to render form fields automatically look up their current value in the model state dictionary. The model state lookup allows bad values to preserve themselves after the model binding fails. I guess so you can probably uh, show uh, the associate error messages, I would guess. Some additional input helpers. HTML.hidden to render a hidden input. You know, I always get asked quite get asked questions like, give me an example of where you'd use a hidden field. All right, let's suppose that I go out and let's see if I can show you one. Okay, so let's go out here. Let's go out to pizzahut.com. And let's suppose that I want to come in here and I want to check out my local deals and I'm looking at them, and I decide that when I do this, I want uh, a 
double cheesy crust pan pizza. I've never had one of those, so I'm going to get one of those. All right? So, it's, it's telling me to sign in. I should not have to sign in. Let me go back again. Let me go to... Oh, it's asking me, okay, what do I want here? I'll want a carryout. Okay, use my location, 63385, because that's in Wentzville. Find a store. It'll find the Pizza Hut that's in Wentzville. All right. And do I want a pre-order? I don't know. The, the point is this. Eventually, what's going to happen? What would I want on my pizza? Just say Supreme. That's fine. Done. All right. Continue to toppings. I already did this, I thought. There. Hopefully that's done. Next. Continue. No thanks for extra cheese. Sooner or later, what should happen is it should throw something into the cart. I don't know why this is so hard. I've used Pizza Hut before and ordered things. But the idea is it'll give me a price and then it'll say tax. So let's say that I get something that's $13.99. All right. And it says that the tax on there, I don't know, is a dollar. And then my whole cost is $14.99. Well, an example, the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this to you, of a hidden field would be the tax rate. There really wouldn't be a reason for me to show the tax rate on screen. I want to show the taxable amount, but I don't want to show the tax rate. So that could be a hidden field. All right. Password renders a password field that looks like a text box helper except it does not retain the posted value and uses a mask. So typically, again, what they mean there, and you've seen this before, I'm sure you all have, when you start to type in your password, rather than seeing your password, you'll see typically like a black dot for each letter, for example. Radio buttons, good for mutually exclusive choices. They give an example if you want to let the user select a single color from a list of colors. You can have multiple radio buttons. Okay, so this would give you three radio buttons. This one would be chosen by default because it's true. And this HTML radio button helper that's right here will render that HTML. As mentioned down below that, the radio button has a strongly typed counterpart, which is a radio button 4 and they give you an example here it says rather than a name and a value it takes an expression that identifies the object that contains the property that's kind of cool so it says look through your genre ID if you if it's a 1 it's rock if it's a 2 so it's saying run the lambda expression and based on the result of what M is all right, if M is 1, set it to there. If M is 2, there. If M is 3, there, etc. The checkbox helper is unique, as it says, because it renders two input elements, those being both a type, well, I, I guess really a, a value. Is it, is it a value and a name? says you're probably wondering why the helper renders a hidden input in addition to the checkbox input. The helper renders two inputs because, and that's the other one, right, right there. Because the HTML specification indicates that a browser will simply generate a value for a checkbox only when the checkbox is on or selected. Rendering helpers, bottom of page, 130 and going on to 131 as it says they provide links to other resources inside of an application it can also be used with partial views 
we've got here on page 131 the action link html.action link and the html.route link the action link as it says renders a hyperlink or anchor tag to another controller action it uses the routing API to generate the URL when you need a link that points to an action that's going to be involved in a different controller you can specify the controller name as the third argument so you are in the action method of one controller calling the action method of another controller from there turning up to page 132 URL helpers as it says they're similar to the HTML action link and route helpers but rather than returning HTML they build URLs and then return them as strings so it says here the action URL helper is exactly like the action link but it does not return an anchor tag When we go into chapter 8, which is the Ajax chapter, we'll see another use for the action helper. The route URL helper follows the same pattern as the action helper, but it accepts a route name and does not have arguments for a controller name and action name. Sometimes these are, for lack of better words, as the saying goes, uh, two different sides of the same coin, that they're very similar, and sometimes there are differences between the two of them. As we finish up here, or get close to finishing up, html.partial and html.render.partial. The partial helper renders a partial view into a string. Typically, as it says, a partial view contains reusable markup you want to render from inside of different views, so it allows a sharing to take place. The render partial is similar to the partial, but the render parcel writes directly to the response output stream rather than returning a string. Okay. HTML.action and HTML.renderAction on the bottom of page 133 and going on to 134 and 135. As mentioned there, action and render action are similar to the partial and render partial helpers. All right, the partial helper typically helps a view render a portion of the views model using view markup in a separate file. Action, on the other hand, executes a separate control action and displays the result. Action offers more flexibility and reuse because the controller action can build a different model and make use of a, of a separate controller context. The only difference between action and render action is that render action writes directly to the response. They give an example there on the bottom of page 133 that goes on to page 144, 34, sorry. Finally, passing values to render action. Because these action helpers invoke action methods, specifying additional helpers is possible. For example, they show in part one there, Suppose you want to, to supply a menu with options. You can define a new class as shown in part one, or you can change the action method to accept an extra parameter as part two, or you can pass in the menu options from the call and the view as part three. Another thing to note there, as it says, is that the render action honors the action name attribute when calling the name. If you annotate the action, you'll need to make sure to use, in this case, cool menu, that name when calling the render action. So this is pretty much the second straight chapter. Well, really more this chapter and I think the next chapter. We haven't written any code in here. and I, I realize that these lectures are dry enough anyway, but I think they become a little less dry when we are, are uh, writing some code. But in this chapter, we talked about forms and how they work, how to build forms on the web, and mainly how to use the 
rendering related HTML helpers. As we talked about before, helpers are not trying to take away the control over the application's markup. Rather, they're about achieving productivity while allowing the developer to retain complete control over what gets produced in the application. So when I return in just a couple minutes, I'm kind of on a roll here today. So I'm going to jump into chapter six, which is a fairly short chapter. And chapter six is on data annotations and validation. Okay, so I'll be back with that chapter shortly.